So the world has been watching in horror the events of the last week or so. First, it started with the uh, Hamas attacks on Israel, innocent Israeli civilians, and now there is a massive retaliation operation by Israel. But where does the story go beyond the next six months? Yes, Israel is preparing for a ground offensive, but what about beyond that? What comes in place of Hamas if indeed the objective of this is to obliterate Hamas and ensure the end of Hamas. Joining me now is Mr. Ian Bremer. He's the head of the Eurasia Policy Group. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bremer, for joining us. First things first, and I think our viewers need to sort of make sense of this. Why would Hamas do such a thing as they did on Saturday, uh, where they went after elderly women, they went after babies, they went after young people who were at at an outdoor music festival. What was the immediate provocation? Because I don't see anything come out of that attack and the series of attacks that we saw over the past weekend other than Israel's response to it, which, as they claim, their military objective is to annihilate Hamas. So why would they do it? Look, I, I'm, I, I'm not in a position where I can help you understand what goes on in the minds of a terrorist attack. I mean, that's like asking me why would Osama bin Laden, um, you know, orchestrate uh, the killing of thousands of Americans uh, in the Pentagon and the Twin Towers. Uh, I mean, this is this is a sick and depraved act. It's an inhuman act. But what I can tell you is that the Palestinian situation was becoming marginalized and desperate uh, over the course of the past ten years, uh, and and this is true in the region. Uh, there were lots of people around the world that said that you could not actually resolve uh, anything in the Middle East without peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. That turned out not to be true. You had Israel with uh, normalization of relations with Bahrain, with the UAE, uh, and with Morocco, even as the Palestinian situation got worse. You had improved relations with Saudi Arabia, even as the Palestinian situation got worse. Inside Israel, you had enormous focus on judicial reform and demonstrations, domestic demonstrations, uh, Netanyahu's corruption cases, all of this distraction, nobody talking about the plight of the Palestinians. In fact, the Israelis only taking more illegal land settlements on the ground in the West Bank. So the Israelis weren't paying attention to it either. And meanwhile, particularly in Gaza, you had 2.3 million Palestinians that were living like animals, 90% uh, without access to clean water, 50% living in hunger, uh, no way to educate themselves and their children, no way to have proper employment and economic opportunities. None of this justifies terrorist activity, but all of this helps to explain that the situation for the Palestinians, particularly in Gaza, was getting worse and worse and worse and no one cared no one was prepared to do anything about it so i mean that's the context uh for uh what we have seen over the course of the past days but there is now a, a, a sort of seeming distinction if you will between yes the root cause the palestinian question the two-state solution the peaceful coexistence of israel and palestine on the one side that is a long-standing thing that's been happening for the last 50 plus years now but the events of saturday and the consequences of the events of saturday that is being framed in a very different narrative and that is pure terror it is terror that is driven by uh, a, a certain violent ideology which is not just about the the establishment of an independent Palestinian state this is perhaps about attacking people for who they are and what religion they follow and 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 what faith they they, they follow I, I, I think I, I think those two distinctions how do you separate the argument I mean I hate to say it Gara, but I think you're you're focusing on the wrong issue uh, I mean, Hamas has been killing civilians indiscriminately for a long time, but they haven't killed very many. And the reason for that is because they haven't had the capacity to do so. So what's really changed in the last several months has been Netanyahu's failure to protect Israeli civilians. That That is what has changed. 
Um, I mean, for the last six months, I've spoken publicly about Israel a great deal. No one's asked me about the Palestinians. Netanyahu, as prime minister, has access to the best border security in the world, the best human intelligence in the world, the best signals intelligence in the world. And for the last six months, he has ignored that. He has taken troops from the Israeli Defense Forces away from Gaza and moved them into the West Bank to deal with expanded settlements and Palestinian reprisals. His own cabinet has said, we're not worried about Hamas. They're not planning any significant attacks in Israel. This was an unprecedented un intelligence failure. I mean, the issue is not that Hamas has suddenly changed. The issue is that Netanyahu has failed to protect Israeli civilians. And, and by the way, the Israeli people overwhelmingly blame Netanyahu for that. The Jerusalem Post, which is not a left-wing uh, newspaper in Israel by any stretch, it's on the right, just did a survey and 86% of Israelis blame Netanyahu for the failures here. So, I mean, this is, this is truly landing on his desk. He is accountable for security for the Israeli civilians and he failed them. Oh, absolutely. I agree with you 100% there. I don't see a way in which uh, Netanyahu survives this war, maybe three or six months from now. Uh, no doubt about it. There was a colossal intelligence failure. And, and you're right when you argue that the events of the last seven, eight months, the crisis with the judiciary, the armed forces, uh, that sort of, you know, took the foot away from the pedal. But when you said that Hamas has now acquired that capability, now, what I'm curious to know is, and, and a lot of people are alluding to this, is uh, that that capability was perhaps enabled by the Iranians. If indeed that is true, and so far we, don't, we have no evidence of it. Neither Americans are saying that, nor are the Israelis. But if at some point in the near future they find evidence of an Iranian involvement in this, what may that mean? What are the chances of this now spreading into a wider regional conflict? I think it's very low uh, that this is going to spread into a war with Iran. Uh, the Iranians don't want that. The Americans don't want it. And frankly, the Israelis don't want it either. The Iranians immediately came out and, of course, called for the destruction of the Zionist regime. That's a criminal act. Um, and, and it's disgusting. Uh, but it, it, they also uh, claimed zero responsibility. And they had their first discussion with Mohammed bin Salman publicly, the Iranian president, and said they want an end to the fighting. So, look, I, I, I don't think uh, there's a big difference between orchestrating the attack and and complicity. There is alignment. The Iranians have provided military support for Hamas. We know that. But but there is no evidence that the Iranians were involved in orchestrating it. In fact, there is evidence that the Iranians were surprised uh, by by the acts, by the attacks when they occurred. So, I mean, you know, we can talk about hypotheticals. If it turns out that that evidence is wrong and the Iranians were really behind it, then I have no doubt that there will be Iranian, there'll be strikes against Iran. Uh, but we are not there. We're not close to there. We're not heading in that direction. If there is an expansion of the war, the likely expansion will be first and foremost into the West Bank, um, where you have lots of Palestinians that will feel a level of solidarity um, with their co-nationals in Gaza and who are now fleeing their homes over 400,000 in the last 72 hours. Um, many of them are getting killed, larger numbers of Palestinian deaths than Israeli deaths since uh, the Hamas attacks just a few days ago. Um, and as those numbers get higher, the potential that Palestinians will engage in violent reprisals in the West Bank against Israeli settlers and over the border is going up. So certainly that's possible. Hezbollah is possible over time. And that kind of escalation could lead to an expansion of the war. But, but we are very, very far from Iran becoming a direct belligerent here.